Hi, I'm Stephanie Doniger, and your hot tip for today is ocular ultrasound. Now, before you start scanning the eye, you want to be very careful not to spend too much time scanning the eye, um, because theoretically you can cause damage by increasing the temperature of the eye. One other setting that you can change on the machine that will help decrease this risk is by actually going into the ophthalmic setting. And you'll notice that the MI goes down to 0.2. Uh, so that decreases the amount of energy towards the eye. When you have a patient with, especially an eye injury, um, you don't want to actually transmit a lot of um, pressure from the probe to the eye. So be very careful. Use a lot of gel, preferably a sterile lube packet, sterile gel packet. Um, and when you hold the probe, you want to hold the probe in your hand and use the fourth and fifth fingers to put them on the patient's orbital rim or the nose to actually put most of the pressure here, there. When you hold the probe, you'll be very gently hold the probe, press very gently and barely at all on the eye itself. So in order to perform the ultrasound, you have a few options. You can first put the gel on a closed eyelid, so if you can close your eyes for me, or put the gel on the transducer itself. Alternatively, you can put a tegaderm over the eyelid, but just be careful because um, you risk pulling out eyelashes when you remove it, which people are not necessarily a fan of. When you hold the probe, as I mentioned, hold the probe in the first three fingers and use these fingers to rest your hand on the patient's face, either the nose or the orbital rim. Most of the pressure will actually be transmitted there and you'll just very gently touch the probe to the eyelid. Now, when you scan the eye, you wanna increase the depth so that you can see the entire globe and you'll see posteriorly the optic nerve. And here you can see structures of the anterior chamber and the lens, including the posterior eye. And posteriorly, you will see the optic nerve as well. You can have the patient look from side to side. So if you can look from side to side, and you can see movement of the eye. And if you can look straight ahead, if you have the probe superior and angle inferiorly, you can also see the pupil. Because of the afferent pupillary light reflex, you can shine a light in the other unaffected eye and you can see the pupil constrict. So take the light away and then add the light. So you can see in the center, the pupil constrict and then you take the light away. This is particularly helpful in situations of trauma uh, where you have a very swollen, painful eye that you can't assess for a pupillary light reflex. And that's your hot tip of the day. Now you give it a try. Thank you.